Hello everyone. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to operate an InSwan document camera using its document software. For this demonstration, I use a little Lego model that I made for my class as part of this demonstration. Here we have a Lego model <coughs> that I made. It's now placed underneath the camera. There are three modes on the upper left corner. The first one is live mode, which is the mode we are in right now. And then next to it is the playback mode, which I will demonstrate later. Next to it is the drawing mode, also I will demonstrate later. Let's go back to the live mode. Under the live mode, <clears throat> which is the mode that you will be using most frequently, it captures the object directly underneath its camera. On the lower left, we have several buttons here. This one is AF, autofocus. Suppose you find this image not very sharp, we can press on it. And it will help you focus. Next to it is the zoom in, zoom out button. If we press the zoom in, we can zoom in like so. And then if we zoom out, like so. If you find this image not bright enough, you can increase its brightness. If you find it too bright, you can reduce its brightness. Next to it is the rotate button. You can rotate this image. Okay. On the right hand side are the drawing tools. The first one is the freehand tool in the shape of a pencil. If we select it, then we can draw whatever you want. Then the second one is the eraser which means you can erase whatever you just drew. Underneath that is a line tool. You can draw a line like this by dragging from the starting point to whichever direction you want. After you let go of the mouse, notice there are two dots still on the line. That means this line is still selected. If it's selected, you can change its color like so. You can also change its opacity over here. See, now the line is a bit transparent. Okay. Next, we have the arrow tool. We can draw an arrow like so. While it's, un while it's being selected, we can also change its direction. And we can change its color like that. Then underneath that, we have the rectangle tool, we can draw a rectangle of any shape. By the same principle, if it's selected, we can change its border and we can change its fill like this. Okay. Then we have the ellipse or circle tool can draw a circle or ellipse like this. You can also change its color and its opacity and its border. And the border's opacity. We can also change the width of the border like this. Now, <clears throat> then we have the text tool. The way to use the text tool is, let's say you select the text tool, the press on the icon, then go to a position that you would like your text to be, press, not click, press the left mouse button and drag. Then you can 
type whatever you want. If I type hello, if you go to these red dots, can change the box size. If you go to these yellow lines, you can move the box to wherever you want. Underneath the text button is the select button. Let's say if I draw a circle like so. Then if I want to edit the circle again, I go to the selection button and select the circle. Then I can, let's say, cut it and move it around. Or I can use the copy button, which will give me another circle. And let's say, if yeah, I like the second circle and don't like the first circle, then I will, so I can select the circle again and click the click the scissors icon twice then the circle will be gone now let's talk about the buttons on the left hand side suppose I draw something and if I don't like it I will undo but then on second thought, I want to keep it. Then I can redo. But after all, let's say if you really don't want it, you can erase all by clicking this third button. Now everything is erased. Now let's talk about the capture button. The capture button means you can capture the image along with whatever annotation that you make. Let's say if I do this and say sync. That's the annotation. And let's say if I capture it by clicking on this camera button, now it's captured. Suppose if I go out of this and come back again, I will, go to, I will need to go to the playback mode. And underneath, at the lower left corner, I have this file icon. I click on it, and I will find the last image would be the image that I captured. Now, whatever I just captured is now back in this app. Okay. Now, let's talk about the export and import function. Suppose I have a model here, and let's say if I make some annotation, Suppose that's the annotation. And I export it. I save it somewhere. Now let's let's say if we get out of this. And when I come back, if I put the model back in, I will just I can just import it there's my annotation now let's talk about the horizontal flip and vertical flip suppose I put a model here let me focus it okay if I go to this horizontal flip button, if I click on it, you can see now the image is flipped. Or I can do a vertical flip. Or I can do both. Okay. Now let's talk about the setting if we click on the setting button, there are three things that you need to be concerned with. The first thing is device. When you hook up your <coughs> document camera, 
the default setting is it says document camera. The second thing is resolution, which is also called format. By default, the resolution is 1920 by 1080. Depending on your computer's power, if it's strong enough, that this document camera can support up to 3264 by 2448. But if your computer is not fast enough, then it may lag. So please, please notice that. Then the third thing is the location where you will need to save your file. For example, let's say if I want to capture something and then I need to save it. By default, it's saved under document slash document. Let's say if we change it to this very low resolution. And then if I press start previewing, let me put something underneath. Now the resolution has been changed. See, now the resolution is not as fine as before. So let's say if we change it back. Now you can see the resolution is much higher. Now let's talk about the recording. If we press recording, it will start recording whatever I'm saying right now. Let's say if I have a hand moving this boat around, and let's say if I want to make some annotation to this boat. Now let's say if I finish recording, I stop. Now, and then next time I come in, I can go to preview, go to this file, and select the one I recorded last time, which is the boat. You so now it's playing now. Right now. While it's playing, I can also make some annotation to this image. I can stop this recording or keep playing. And I can lower the voice or turn on the volume. The playback function along with the annotation can help students remember whatever that you taught them last time. Now let's talk about the drawing mode. You go to drawing mode, <clears throat> you start with a black screen. Like the annotation function, you can draw anything you want, or erase it, or draw a line. Or draw an arrow, or change color. Draw a rectangle, same thing, you can change the fill. And change the border, the border width, or thickness, draw a circle, or write text. One more thing. There are two icons at the lower left corner, which is the whiteboard or blackboard. So you can choose whichever you like. Okay, and then next to it, you will find the ratio, the aspect ratio of this image. You can choose 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. This concludes the demonstration for the InSwan document camera. Thank you.